welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. The videos have been coming thick and fast and I'm really enjoying them at the moment. I've got a couple of little blotches here and there, an ingrown hair here and I've got a, yeah, just the sort of usual stuff that comes along with shaving. I'm unfortunately not blessed with the same sort of skin that most people out there on the shaving videos have that seem to look pretty spot on for most of the shaves. Paul H being one of them, I never his skin always looks spot on. I don't know what it's like in person obviously but you just never know. Barrister and Man Adagio. Now I've just found out recently that, well literally 10 minutes ago, that this stuff is quite likely unobtainium. Now I had this up for sale in a lot not too long ago, it was on this for sale pile and I've just pulled it back out, had a little smell and I thought you know what, fancy a little bit of menthol. The scent on this I actually quite like but it's the wife that doesn't like it but she's at work today so let's get stuck in. The scent on it, for me, is quite gourmand. I get a sort of chocolatey note to it. Bit of green, bit of, so almost like a bit of citrus or something. I can't really describe it. It's Barrister Man down to a T. It is a unique scent that I've never smelled before. I can't take this and say it smells like anything that my nose has ever smelled before. All I know is it's reasonably nice. It's cologne, sweet, gourmand. It's got a bit of everything that I like, to be honest. It's just not a, it's not a scent that sets my world on fire, let's just say that. The brush for today is none other than the same brush that I'm probably going to use for the whole of November, I've decided. And that is the Simog Owners Club Taj brush. I've just received confirmation from Simog themselves that this is actually named the Taj resin due to the fact that it is a similar colour and look to the Taj Mahal in India, that sort of creamy colour. And it's just a bit of a hat tip to the Taj Mahal and the makers of that beautiful building. So I think it was Nav that mentioned that it could be possibly that and he was spot on. So here we have it. Now this is a 24mm premium bore. This one is immaculate. There's nothing, there's no dodgy coloured hairs in here at all. It's just pure blonde bore. I believe this is dyed. I'm not 100% sure. In terms of funk, there was no funk. If you want a, a boar hair brush that doesn't stink of wet animal, Simog, I haven't had a Simog brush that stunk yet. Omega, on the other hand, do tend to give off quite a pungent aroma. But straight into the soap, I flicked out a fair bit of the water, but not a lot. I found with this brush, particularly this one, that it prefers to be loaded quite wet rather than damp so it just seems to work better last time i used barrister man with this brush as well was this the reserve base which this one isn't this is the glissant base it really comes alive barrister man sense when you get a bit of water on them so what i'm going to do is really get this brush super loaded up no scrimping this time like i did with the Fougere Gothic, I think that was part of my problem, was just not loading the brush long enough to allow the soap to get right into the fibres. I'm not quite sure, I think this is about the 8th use on this brush now. Simog have recommended at least 15 before it's sort of pretty much broken in as much as it's going to be. And from then on in it'll make very small steps in terms of breaking it in even more. But to get through that initial, it's ready to rock and roll stage, they said about 15 to 20 shaves. 15 to 20 uses, should I say. Right, I think that's loaded absolutely shit tons. So I have managed to get onto... This is a cold water shave. But the water's quite... It's not really that cold. The warm weather is on the way even though we did get stung with some more wet weather yesterday, just after I'd sprayed for the weeds. So I was a bit pissed off with that. <laughs> I should have checked the weather forecast beforehand. You just expect in Western Australia, when you start getting the nice weather, that it's just going to stick around. And it's not at the moment. We're having some really strange weather. My wife seems to think that it's the, the end of the world. And sadly, well not sadly, but my, 
when my wife says stuff, she's generally right. <laughs> so, <laughs> aren't all the women always right? One thing with Barrister and Man, I will say, generally the soaps taste like the smell. This tastes sweet. It tastes pretty much like it smells. Now I believe there is there is menthol in here. Let me have a look. And just for the scent as well, this is cherry, lily of the valley, musk, menthol, violet leaf, and lime. Really nice combination of scents, really. If I'm honest, that's the sort of stuff that if I picked up a tub of soap and couldn't smell it. I had to go off what it said on the tin, that's the sort of thing I would like. And it is nice, it's not a, it's not an offensive smell. It is for my wife, my wife doesn't like it, but for me it's not. It's just extremely complex. And because it's so unique, it's one of those scents that you, if you don't love it straight away, you need to smell it more, <laughs> more often. And as with most of my soaps, they get a good sniff every now and then. I'm sure most of you wet shaving guys out there and gals have the same. I feel the menthol already. Nice amount of menthol in this as well. So I'm just painting some water in there. Some of the Friedberg sprinkle. I've managed to watch a few shaving videos today. I'm at home with my middle son at the moment who's not very well again it works really well that oh it's a great kick of menthol on this I forgot how nice it was all I'm doing just there is just opening up the brush so that I can do that again Needs a lot of water. A lot of water. Just drying the handle off a little bit there, got a little bit of water on it. This is taking a shit ton of water. Wow, I wasn't expecting this. You know I like a good long ladder, but I think this is going to take a lot longer than I thought, this one. I've really overloaded the brush, I think, which is no bad thing. All right, let's get this splayed and see what we can do with it. I've just watched Spencer's shave as well. He hasn't uploaded for a while. I thought he saw it. pretty much packed it in. I know he's been really busy with his new job. He used the razor rein again, which 
I have to admit, as it's not a razor which is actually. I look at it, I think, yeah, it's not my sort of thing, but I mean, it's quite a good design, really, isn't it? It's a DE razor on a stick. <laughs> That's the best way for me to describe it, really. I can't describe it really any other way. Right, I think we've got enough here. <laughs> I, think, I think there's enough just on my face right now to do about 10 passes. But I'm going to leave most of it on there because I like it really thick and voluminous. But as always, look at that. I've also watched the Red Island Shaver yesterday. He is beasting out some cracking ladders. I noticed his eyesight and I had a few guys that watch him. He's got a degenerative eye condition. I can't remember exactly. I can't remember if he actually told me what it was called or what exactly it was like, but basically his eyesight, I think since he's been born, has just over the years deteriorated to the point now where even with glasses on he's pretty much, he's not got really any great sight. But I tell you what, he does a crack and shave and his ladders now are exceptional. He does sort of follow a similar sort of routine to me with my ladder and I love a ladder like this. I do enjoy watching Paul H, but his ladders, are, they're, they're a bit boring, but it's the chat that I go for. He talks a lot of shit, just like me, and I enjoy listening to the shit. So, Christopher Bradley, Razor from Carve. I've got the B plate again. Dustin is enjoying the C plate up in Perth at the moment, and like he says, you still need to use a light touch. And it's true, you need a light touch with these razors. Even with this B plate, I find I need a light touch with it, because if you push too hard, you get irritation no matter what with most razors. But... Let's get stuck in. I've got a Gillette Ruby on its sixth use. This is a zero prep shave. I've literally walked in the bathroom, filled the bowl up, pre soaked the brush for about 20 minutes in cold water. I'm actually really starting to enjoy this B plate. There's a lot of forgiveness with it, I find. You can shave quite fast with it without causing too many dramas. It's hard for me generally to shave down here at the bottom of my neck and not get any weepers because my hair grows in all sorts of directions down there so it's really difficult to get a, a weeper free shave for me generally but every now and then I do tend to get one and I do prefer them weeper free that's just one less area for irritation really that menthol wow now it's not ice cold like a sterling menthol but it's nice like I see the water isn't freezing cold I should really chuck a bit of ice in there just to spice it up a little bit just get a little bit of lather run off onto the handle here right This knob is definitely getting better with use. I'm getting really nice scrub from it now, but there's no real individual feeling of fibres anymore. I could feel in the first sort of four or five shaves, even though there was no scritch or scratch, I could still feel specific fibres on my skin just every now and then, just rubbing lightly over the skin. It now feels just like a big cloud. And as you can see, it 
is making a stunning lather. And I will be returning to Barrister's Reserve with this brush within this month just to dispel the myth that I can't get a lather from it <laughs> using this brush. It was quite upsetting if I'm honest. I'm normally reasonably good at getting a lather. Right, one thing I will know I will say again, the specific silks that bring out the smell of the brass. You might think I'm nuts, but I've been using this razor now for months, every day, pretty much for months. And there's only a few soaps, and I can't even remember what they are now. This is one of them. It brings out the smell of the brass. I can really smell it. And it's part of the reason why some people haven't pulled the trigger on the brass razor. Because it does have that tendency to have a smell. Now it's not it's nothing bad, it's not majorly off-putting but it's there and it does smell somewhat like the best way to describe it for me is if you get your hands, if you, if you work in an industry where you're dealing with coins all the time, cash, copper and silver and nickel, whatever they're all made out of now. If you smell your fingers, <laughs> if you've been dealing with that cash for ages and ages and you, and you don't wash your hands or you forget and you just put your hand up to scratch your nose and you smell it, that's what the brass razor smells like when I use it with specific soaps. It's not all soaps. I would say 90%, 95% of the soaps that I use, I can't smell the razor at all, I can't smell the metal. But just every now and then, like this, I'll use a soap that for some reason or another, it just seems to bring out the scent of the brass. So it's definitely something to bear in mind, that if that would really put you off, which it doesn't with me, but I can imagine it would put some people off. The great thing with this soap is, is it's got enough scent strength to sort of overpower it. This doesn't need any water, but I am going to, I'm going to sprinkle some on and just see whether with this smog I can make it grow a little bit more. Because the hardest thing I find with bore brushes that I don't really get with any other type of knot, including badger and horse here, is that it just sort of chews through the lather right at the very end and you struggle to get that final lather to be voluminous to have any sort of structure to it at all. But as you can see, if you have a look on my neck over here and under here, it's, it's exploded again. So I'm really, really happy. And for me personally, I much prefer the Glissant base from Barrister and Man. I just find it much more enjoyable to lather. It's very dense. I mean, this is a really dense, dense lather. It feels heavy. Thank you. 
head shave from yesterday wasn't the best either. But thankfully, the video that I've uploaded isn't that great either. It's missing quite a few minutes, I think from a minute 11 to 17. It's missing quite a lot of the video. I've tried uploading it twice now. It's working perfectly on my computer. I've got the whole video on there, but I just can't get it to work on YouTube, so. I'm just gonna have to leave it as it is, unfortunately. That'll be one of my sort of duds. It's not that much happens in between it. It was quite a long video and it wasn't a great head shave. I was using the calf, Christopher Bradley razor. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this all over again and just give it a bit of a scrub, just for the sake of the brush, even though my video is probably very long already. And just to see how good the lather is for a fourth lather from one load. Right, now let's just scoot that on there. And let's add some water to see what happens. See if I can get this to explode again. Which is a miracle, for a, especially for a bore hair brush, for me. And away it goes, it's, it's going again, brilliant. Now this isn't just the brush playing its part, this is obviously the soap as well. Barrister Man is a very, very high quality soap with great water retention. The other thing I love about Barrister and Man, I never get a reaction to it. No matter what the base is, what the scent is, I haven't had a reaction to a Barrister and Man soap yet. This stuff is crazy slick, like wow. Well, I am done, done and done. Wow. So post shave, I can tell you already, just, just from feeling now, it is extremely moisturised. And that's down to the soap and getting the right amount of moisture into the soap in order to release all the properties from the soap. It's high quality stuff, it smells great, it lathers great, it's firm, it lasts quite a long time. This soap's going to certainly last me a very long time because I've got far too much soap and I struggle to get, I'm going to struggle to get through all the soaps I own in my lifetime. And the way it goes is you end up just buying more and more new stuff. Because there's so much going on in the shaving world at the moment. I sort of wish I'd joined like probably 10 years ago and got into this type of shaving. And maybe I'd, I would, wouldn't have lost the, the drive and passion for the hobby. But I might have been more sensible by this time. And I have been. I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on this hobby. Not just on myself, but on others as well. In terms of shipping stuff and piffs and giveaways and gifts. So I've just washed out the brush, rinsed it all out, got all the soap out, 
and it's just a light dusting. I don't think you can see it on the camera, you might be able to, I'm just literally, just like that, flicking it. Uh, I don't know, can you see? Yeah, you can see, you can see it, brilliant. This camera's great, it picks up so much more than my previous iPhone. Now this is the rear facing camera, it just seems to be sort of, it pushes me further back into the room and takes up more of the room, rather than being right sort of there where you, you know, you don't have much to play with. I can look to the left of the camera here and it still picks me up pretty much centre and picks up most of the, most of what's going on. So really, really impressed with this camera at the moment. Yeah, the post shave is absolutely lovely. I mean, that's a, that is a cracking shave. Wow. I'm just going to finish off with with a splash, the closest splash I can come to this. This is a, such a unique scent. I wish I had the matching Bahama splash to go with it, but I don't, I don't even know if there was one. I think there was, but I'm just going to finish this one off with Moil Grooming Wildflowers, which was the closest thing I've got in my den to that. And this is, this is lovely stuff. And this one, this one isn't frosted. One, two, three, three little splashes. It literally, I don't know, oh, 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 I don't know whether you guys can see that. If I see if I stick my finger there. You might be able to just see the little reservoir. That's all it is, just three tiny little splashes. Yeah, I know I've had a great shave because I've got no sting from the alcohol whatsoever. It's a very, very floral scent. It, it is like super floral. Yes, it's called wildflowers. Yeah, yeah, go figure. But. Even though it's super floral, it's not a sort of floral that's not nice in terms of a, a gentleman's scent. I think, yeah, it's probably too feminine to wear on like going out anyway, but it's nice enough that it's just on the borderline that you'd get away with going out and people going, oh, that smells quite nice. No, fuck, you smell like a bouquet of flowers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so the sofa today was Barrister and Man Adagio. And if you look right in the disc in the middle there, all the way around this little red disc is the scents, the scent notes of this splash, of this soap, splash, soap. Fucking hell, man, get your act together. I'm just going to rinse this, dry this bit off. That is the ingredients which are on the base of the soap itself. So you can have a little pause here if you want to have a look at it. That is what the soap looks like. It does have a very sort of light, light green colour to the soap. Very similar to the, the colour on the, the lid. You can probably see it now that they're next to each other. Very, very light green, which is quite nice. I quite like the colour. The brush for today performed, probably the best it's performed since I since it arrived in the den. The Samog Owners Club Taj. And this has got the 24mm Premium Serda, which is Bristle in Portugal, Portuguese. And it is an absolutely stunning brush. You can see now how this knot is blooming out and how the fibres look now. They really are starting to... There's, there's loads of them I've just split. If I see if I can just get a couple of these little fibres just on the edge here. You can see where they've all split several times. Oh, this camera is so, so good. Just on here. You can see all these fat. Now that's happening great through this whole knot. There's still quite a lot of hairs in there that I haven't split yet, but you can see where they sort of they sort of gel up, make a little ball, and then what happens is they just sort of one day they just sort of split open and burst, and you end up with this beautiful soft tips all over, and this does feel very luxurious on the skin now. I think it looks exceptional. I think for such a plain, almost in my eyes, a boring looking brush, it actually looks very elegant. And it's so comfortable to use, it's got a great weight to it. I think the silver ring, right? It just everything about it works. It looks really, really nice, in my opinion. I think Samoga done an excellent job with this one. And the knot itself, I would probably say it's my favourite bow knot now. And I've not even broken this brush in yet. I would say it's better than the Whip Dog, which is an exceptional knot. So that gives you a good idea of what I think of this one. It's better than the Omega bow. I find the Omega bow just to be a little bit long and loft and a little bit springy, but it's still a beautiful knot. But similar to Flash Bodum, I'm going to be doing a sort of brush, going through the den and throwing my brushes, giving a bit of an insight into what's in the den and how many brushes I've got and what I like and don't like about them. Similar to what Flash Bodum's just done. So I'll be stealing your idea, mate. 
The razor today was the Carve Christopher Bradley razor and if we just open this up like so we will see that there is a Gillette Ruby in there and it's got three, four, five five dots on it so that was shave number six and that blade will be going in the bin now and you can just see on here it was the B plate that I was using I can't remember what the, what the blade gap is on the B plate but it's something like 0.71 something like that 0.71 yeah it's not 71 millimeters like Kevin shaves one you know the one that you can shave like a, a bear with and the splash was mild grooming wildflowers this one's not mentholated it's not the frosted version sadly but it is a stunning stunning splash and if you caught my head shave which the full head shave's not on there it's, it's sort of crashed at some point it's done it twice now i don't know why i used moil grooming yesterday after a pretty average shave and it really 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 helped bring my skin back to something normal to the point where I could probably shave again today with the cartridge razor and it would be absolutely fine. I wouldn't have any extra or any irritation at all. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video or dislike the video. I can really give a rat's ass if you give it a thumbs down. You know, there's a lot of people don't like the Scottish, a lot of people don't like me. But hey, it's just the way it is. You guys stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.